Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Humanities 112. I'm Dr. Michael Kern. I will be your professor for this particular course. Uh, it's great to have you with us. thought I'd take a moment here to tell you a little bit about the course, about how we're going to do things, and uh, some, some tips for being successful in this course. Um, we cover a number. Uh, most of you probably have had UM 111 already. This is kind of a continuation of that. UM 111 starts from the beginning of time, roughly to the Renaissance, a little bit past that, and then we pick up from that point and carry through to the modern day. Uh, the, the focus on the class is, is somewhat multifaceted. We discuss uh, important movements in art, music, literature, uh, history, and all that, and kind of give it a nice context as you have some uh, conceptualization as to how the humanities uh, have evolved from the Renaissance to the modern time. Okay, We do that in a number of ways. Um, there are these, uh, and you're probably used to the stray of PowerPoints each week. Uh, I try to make the class a little bit more personal, and you'll find each week that uh, my messages, uh, weekly messages, I post in video format. Uh, I also post my own uh, kind of lectures, and usually during the lecture portion that I add, I try to add some historical context so that you have a good understanding of why some of the things that are happening uh, that they're talking about in the PowerPoint slide and uh, in the textbook are happening, because the book does a great job talking about the art, the music, a little bit more, the li less of the literature, um, but what it really needs to is a little bit more historical context. I try to provide that in my lectures, so you can tune in my lectures uh, and listen to those, uh, hopefully, and, and enjoy those and gain some additional insights. It might help you um, on your quizzes, on your assignments, and in your discussion postings. Okay, so that's something unique about this class is there is a lot of instructor-generated video content. Uh, I like to, to be a part of your class, and I used to feel in the old days where it's just typing, 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 uh, that I didn't get to know you real well, and clearly you didn't get to know me very well. Uh, I'm hoping this, this kind of bridges the gap in that, so this may be somewhat new to a lot of you uh, checking out video formats, but please take advantage of that. A couple tips to being successful in this class. Uh, tip one, please be active. There is a huge correlation between people that are active, and by active, and people that are active are early discussion posters. Uh, they post on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, etc., etc. And discussions, and I should talk briefly about that uh, a little bit here. If you, one of the first things you need to do um, is go to the student section and print yourself a copy of the course guide. There's a number of important things. Everything you need to know is in the course guide. And some of you who like to be proactive, there are uh, three major writing assignments for this class. And uh, some of you probably want to jump on them early. Some of you, you know, may need a little bit more time. There is one assignment that requires you to attend a cultural event, like go to a museum, go to a concert, go to a live theatrical performance, okay? Uh, you probably need time to plan that. That's not really something you can just, oh, I need, or maybe you can. If there's a museum near you, you can just hop uh, over to it. But um, please print out the course guide. Take a good look through each aspect each week and kind of map out how you're going to budget your time to accomplish everything you need to accomplish in this course. Okay. Having said that, probably one of the most critical pieces of information in the student section is my phone number, 412-200-0978. That's my cell phone number. Um, I have a strong preference for phone calls or text messages rather than emails. Usually, if you need something, and usually need comes in a couple of formats. One, the most common need, the most common message I will get is my quiz froze. Those of you who are veterans of Strayer will know that sometimes, particularly on Sundays, Blackboard tends to freeze sometimes, or at least it did, but we went through this new upgrade. Maybe that won't happen as much. But if your quiz freezes, there's an immediacy. Oh my gosh, I need to get back on my quiz. If you shoot me an email, heck, I might be somewhere else. I might be wherever, and I won't get the message for a while. If you call me or text me, usually I can fix it pretty darn fast. And I like to fix things quickly. So if there are issues, again, please address them quickly. Phone call, email, or phone call or text message is strongly preferred. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Uh, you may call or you may text me virtually at any time. If you call me after 10 or 11 p.m., I, I may not get back to you till the morning. So bear that in mind. But trust me, I will get back to you. Um, now that kind of leads into what I was talking about, about being proactive. Um, 
the discussions are a huge part of this course. And one of the other things I will do that I, I don't know if a lot of other people do, this may, might be new as well, I usually post a mini video. Uh, I'll post a couple of videos each week. I'll have a mini lecture, as I said, to give you some historical context about the time period we're talking about. I will also post my discussion comments, at least my initial posting, as a video. So please feel free to watch my discussion video, and you can comment on that, and that's kind of a, a snowball starter for the discussion, uh, if you will, each week. So uh, take advantage of that. But again, people that tend to be really successful in this course are people that attack the class early in the week. People who post on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. And remember, for discussions at this university, it's three postings on two different days per discussion question. Okay. Uh, some students in the past would take, oh, there's two discussion questions. I'll do all my postings for question one on Monday, all my discussion postings three on Tuesday for the second one, and I'm done. Well, you're not. It has to be two separate dates for each discussion. So discussion question one of week one, you need to post on two separate dates, just like you do for discussion question two. Okay. So please, as much as possible, be uh, as proactive as possible in there and post early. I can't even begin to tell you the, the comparison, the correlation between early discussion posters and positive grades. So if you want, you want to be someone that is early and active in the discussion. Additionally, um, there's no extra credit in this class per se. And usually at the end of the term, people are like, oh, I need extra points. I need extra points. Uh, however, I give a ton of bonus points if you do the following. Each week in the discussions, for anyone who has completed their discussion questions before Friday at midnight, okay, that means you have three total postings on two separate days, complete. You can have more, of course. More is better. Um, if you have that all done by Friday at midnight, you can earn bonus points on the discussions. There's 22 discussions or so this term. I think it's 22, 21, 22. But you can earn 5 to 10 points uh, more per discussion. That's almost 200 bonus points. So if you took advantage of that every week and diligently got in-depth, in detailed discussions, three postings, two separate days for each discussion, you can rack up a ton of points. And that's kind of one of the ways you can hedge your bet against maybe forgetting to do an assignment or not having time to do an assignment, handing something in late, forgetting a quiz, et cetera, et cetera. You can hedge against that by being active in the discussions early and often. So I strongly encourage students to do that whenever possible. Okay? Um, I like active discussions. Again, feel free to disagree with me. Most of these discussions, it's not a lot of right or wrong answers per se. Uh, because the arts are interpretive. Humanities are, by definition, interpretive. Some people look at something and see, aha, I see this, and someone else could look at the same thing and go, oh, I don't see that, I see this. Uh, that's part of the fun of the discussions. So feel free to be creative in your discussions. A um, couple things to avoid in discussions. I run into this every now and then. The discussions are your own thoughts. It is okay to read another source, and from time to time, I will include stuff. I will say, hey, here's an interesting website that talks about this. And I'll provide the, the web address and, and some material on it. Uh, but when you are commenting on stuff, do not copy and paste in the discussion. In fact, don't copy and paste anything to this entire course. Everything should be your own words. It's okay if we're talking about uh, Mozart, which I think we are in week two maybe, or maybe week three. Um, if you need to read up on Mozart, you go to a website, www.mozartrocks.com. I don't know if there is. I just made that up. Um, and you read about it. It's okay to say, I went to www.mozart.com and learned blank, 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 blank. And then read about it and then say, and therefore, I think Mozart was a genius because blah, blah, blah. You can do that. If you are gathering information from outside sources, you do need to give the outside sources credit. But you also need to put everything in your own words. That's really critical on the discussions. Okay. Now, if you're not sure, again, the key, the key to success in any online class uh, is communication. If you are unsure of what to do, you grab your phone, you call me. That simple. That way, I'll give you guidance as to what I think would be the most appropriate way to do something. And if I say it, then it's probably, you know, not something you're going to worry about getting a bad grade on. So uh, please keep that in mind. Now, having said that, uh, a couple other things to be... Um, a couple other good tips to be successful in here. One, uh, the, the quizzes, I think, quite frankly, I think the quizzes are hard. 
or at least harder than they probably should be. Um, I don't make up the quizzes. Uh, they come out of a big test bank from the publisher. So, but the quizzes are challenging. That is another reason to focus a lot of time to make the discussions early to rack up the bonus points. What I'm going to try to do this term as well, um, each week that there's a quiz, I'll post a quiz review. It's impossible for me to go over every question that's on a quiz because, for example, even though your quiz may only have 20 questions uh, or maybe more, they come out of a massive test bank of several hundred questions. So what I'll do each week, each week there's a quiz, I will randomly pick about 10 to 20 questions and I will review 10 to 20 questions in the quiz review. My hunch is at least five or six or maybe more, if you're lucky, will be actually appear on your particular exam. So please take advantage of the quiz reviews, take advantage of my video lectures, and I also will post a lot of things, interesting things, under what's called Instructor's Insights. Uh, that's a relatively new section they started last term, and um, it's a really good place for faculty to put a lot of stuff. I'll put my video lectures there. I may include some other YouTube video clips that I think are really cool, especially musical ones. Uh, where we can listen to Mozart or jazz or whatever we happen to be uh, talking about that week, or perhaps some uh, written stuff as well. Um, the Instructor Insights is not a graded part of the course, uh, so you don't have to do it. It's there to enhance your overall experience with the course. So it's my hope you'll take advantage of it. Um, like anything else in life, you get as much out of something as you're willing to put into it. If you have time, if you have interest, Please feel free to take advantage of some of this stuff. Some of the key stuff, however, will be my video lectures and my quiz reviews. Uh, those will probably have a more direct influence on your course grade, uh, even though they're not graded, but the information there is pretty valuable and might translate into better scores on the quizzes. Okay, uh, So there's that. Uh, other than that, as I said, communicate effectively, participate, be active, be engaged in the discussions. Be proactive with the writing assignments and the quizzes. Doing the quizzes early in the weeks, usually, or as early as possible in the week once you've read through the material, uh, waiting till Sunday is problematic because sometimes quizzes crash. And when the quiz crashes, if it crashes like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, uh, Friday, even Saturday, even Sunday afternoon, pretty easy for me to reset the quiz and you to jump on it. Sunday night at 10.30 or 11 o'clock, it gets somewhat problematic to reset quizzes in time. Um, so please, you know, kind of uh, be aware of those parameters. Try to do as much as you can early in the week. Great way to be successful in this course. Um, other than that, enjoy the course. I don't think this is particularly hard to do well if you just do what I ask you to do and take advantage of all the bonusy opportunities. Bonusy, that's a strange word. I'm sure that's not even a word. Uh, so here I am now making up words in class. Uh, which is fine, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, uh, I look forward to working with you this term. Uh, as I said, you're running any issues or problems, please feel free to give me a call. And uh, other than that, uh, like I said, print out the course guide. Keep my phone number handy. Put it in your phone. Uh, you never know when your quiz is going to freeze. You never know when you're going to need help on an assignment. And sometimes, for some for unforeseen reason, there's a power outage, and you can't, oh my gosh, how do I get a hold of uh, Professor Kern and tell him I can't do uh, X, Y, and Z? Pull out your cell phone, boom, put me in there, call me immediately, and we can deal with issues then. I am much more amenable to dealing with issues before deadlines have passed. I don't really like if I get a message three days after a deadline, oh, I had problems. Um, that's not something that is usually a good thing. So being proactive is a smart way to attack that. So again, it's good to help with a piece of advice. Anyway, other than that, as I said, welcome to Humanities 112. I really enjoy teaching this course. Um, I hope it's a good experience for you. I hope you like uh, the video content. It's kind of something new. I started a couple terms ago, and I'm trying to use that as a way to give you a little bit of me in the class as opposed to the you know, cold voice of the PowerPoint. Aristotle was the father of logic. Next slide. <laughs> Love that, right? Uh, so anyway, uh, as I said, Hope you enjoyed the class. Looking forward to working with you, and best of luck uh, in UM 112. Thanks again. Bye-bye.